This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What are we looking at here? This is the XP Pen Artist 12. Now this is the second generation of this tablet. It's pretty inexpensive. It's designed with budget in mind, but does it measure up? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And like I said in the intro, the XP Pen Artist second generation is designed for artists and illustrators who are looking to get something on a budget that's still pretty good. And I think it kind of fits in there, but there are some caveats. The first thing to know is when you get something that's this inexpensive, they are cutting some corners here and there. But the real question is, is are they cutting the corners that matter? So let's jump in. Let's take a look at the product. What comes in the box? Now, if you check it out on XP Pen's website, there's two versions of this tablet. XP Pen sent me this version. This is the gift edition. As you can see, the gift edition has some really nice packaging. This feels really premium. There's a difference in price between the gift edition and the standard edition. If you look at them next to each other, it seems to me that the only difference here is that packaging and the stickers that are included in the box. Some of the other things that come in the box, like the extra nibs or the cleaning cloth or the drawing glove. I said drawing glove. Of course, in that box, you also have the tablet. I think XP Pen has done a very good job in recent years of, of really upgrading the physical design of their products. And even though this is a budget product, it doesn't feel cheap. The, the buttons are clicking, the way the cords fit into the slots are clicky. This also comes in four colors. The one you're looking at here is black, but you can get a pink version, a green version, or a blue version. And of course it does come with the pen. This pen is using the new X3 technology that XP Pen has been rolling out into all their pens recently. I'm gonna talk a lot more about that in a minute. If you do wanna know the specs on that pen that has over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, 60 degrees of tilt, is battery free, and has a shortcut button along the side. It is just one button. This is a pen display. So if you're new to this kind of product, basically what it is, is it's a screen. So it may look like an iPad or an Android tablet. It's not a full-fledged computer. It needs to be plugged into a Windows, a Linux, or a Mac computer in order to work. This can also be plugged into some Android phones and be used that way as well. That means they've also included the things you're going to need in the box to plug this in. There there are some catches here. Let's, let's go over that. First of all, what they have included is the three-in-one cable. One side of that cable goes into the side of the tablet, and the other side has three connectors. Two of them are USB type A's, and one is an HDMI. Some computers come with those ports, some computers don't, so you might need some kind of adapter or something like that if you wanna use this cable. You're also going to need two USB-A ports available on your computer as well. There's also a USB extender cable. Now, what comes with most of XP Pen's products is a power adapter. That didn't come in the box with my unit. So if you don't wanna plug both of those USB cables into your computer, you can plug one into an outlet and get power that way. If you do have a second option, when you look along the side, you're gonna see two ports. The one I have plugged in here is a USB-C cable port. So you can take one cable, plug it directly into your computer, and that will give it all its power, that'll power the screen. One cable and you're done. It's really nice and really elegant. What's the catch? Well, it goes back to that budget thing. They haven't included this particular cable in the box with the computer. The other thing that is not in the box is any kind of stand. This is something that comes standard with not all of XP Pen's products, but many of them. There are some rubber feet along the bottom that are gonna keep this from sliding around too much on your desk, but I do like to prop up the back, so I would recommend some kind of stand, especially if your neck starts to hurt or your back gets a little sore while you're using it. Next up, I wanna talk about the drawing experience in the pen, but before we do that, I do wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. Manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights, all in one easy-to-use platform. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features that you need to make your products look their best online. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out Squarespace squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash brag colbo to save 10 percent on your first purchase of a website or domain okay so let's get to the drawing part let's jump in and talk about this pen now earlier this fall i reviewed the xp pen artist 16 which 
on the surface looked like a really good tablet, but I had some issues with it. So XP Pen has this brand new technology that they're putting in some of their newer pens that they've included here. They're calling it X3. What does that mean? Well, what they're trying to do is really improve the quality of the pen and specifically the initial activation rate on the pen. So the initial activation rate is how hard do you have to press with the pen before a line shows up. So if you're a very, very light sketcher and you're drawing on the page, you might notice with some pens that have like a higher initial activation rate that no line is going to appear on the screen until you start to apply a little more pressure. So what they've done here is they've really improved that. In fact, if you just very lightly hold the pen and start moving it around the tablet screen, you are gonna see a line appear. So they've done a very good job of improving that. And if you watch my Artist Pro 16 review from a while back, it, you've seen me talk about this quite a bit. And, and that is, is they've improved one thing, but they've taken something away in the process. And the main thing that they've taken away is the quality of the line. So when I was using it on the 16, it was more pronounced. So I think the good news here is, Maybe they've improved the drivers. Maybe they've improved on this tablet a little bit. It's not quite as wobbly as it was on the 16, but when I'm drawing with this pen, the mechanical wobble that I get with it while I'm drawing slow angled lines is definitely still noticeable. The one thing that did seem improved here compared to the 16 is the faster that I started to draw those lines, the more I could see that like working its way out of the lines. So if you do draw slowly and you try to draw those super accurate lines, which I do a lot of in my work, I, I really did notice some of that wave. That meant in a lot of drawing programs, what I had to do is I had to turn up the smoothing, which of course delays the line, slows down the entire process. It doesn't feel as organic to me. I hope this is an area where XP Pen keeps focusing and trying to improve their new technology because I, this is the most important thing for me personally in my artwork that I look for in a pen is just the clarity of those lines and getting rid of that wobble. Because they've nailed a lot of the other things, the pressure sensitivity feels really, really good. Fast lines aren't leaving check marks. It's not doing anything weird with the pressure when you're drawing that quickly. It, it holds pressure well around curves. It does everything else that you'd expect a pen to do and getting it at this budget's price is pretty good. I forgot to talk about the screen. Usually I talk about the screen at the beginning. So let's, let's talk about the screen a little bit. This is another thing where the budget comes in. It is a good screen and it is a good enough screen. It's not as good as like say an OLED screen with like bursting excited colors. This is not like the screens that you find on the newer iPad, but it's good enough. And at the price, I thought the colors are really good. We're talking about 90% NTSC or 127% sRGB. And of course this is a 12 inch screen. Technically it's an 11.9 inch working area. And I will admit when I'm using something like Photoshop or an interface where I have to get in there with a pen and, and change brush sizes manually or tap on little interface elements, it's, it's really small. And so a lot of those programs that have a lot of interface elements that are kind of small to touch, you're really gonna see that and you're gonna notice that on this small of a screen. Technically, you do have a good amount of drawing area. We're talking about a screen that's like full HD. So it's 1920 by 1080. So you do have that space. It's just that everything is so small. I've always said that if you can kind of spring up for the larger sizes, like a 16 inch tablet, that seems to be about perfect when you're drawing in Windows or on a Mac. The other thing they have here is a matte surface. In fact, when you first get the tablet, there's this really satisfying pull off the plastic thing that I love to do. That plastic is there to protect the matte surface. And what that matte surface does is it, it does reflect some of the light. So if it is sitting flat on your table, you're not gonna see like the ceiling light reflections on it quite as much. Also, it's gonna give it a little bit of texture while you're drawing. So your pen's not gonna slide around as much. The other thing on this tablet that I'm really glad is there there are some shortcut keys. This is an area where it seems like a lot of people have been ditching shortcut keys on their tablets as of late. I'm glad they're still here. Not everybody uses them, but I do. And I really like being able to go in there and change those keys to whatever keyboard shortcut I want. So I can move my keyboard out of the way and not think and just draw. All right, let's talk about the pros and the cons. The pros are definitely the price. Like I said, right off the top, this is a very budget price tablet. And at the price that it's listed as, I think it's a pretty good deal. Nothing on here feels like a really high end piece of tech, but at the same time, it didn't feel like they cut any corners that really, really matter. And like I said at the top, even though this is a budget price tablet, the build quality is still really good. Of course, the main con and, and the main thing I'm gonna focus on here is that pen. I'm not a fan of that wobble. And to me, this feels like a little bit of a step backwards from older XP Pen products where they've 
really been improving that. So that is the XP Pen Artist 12 second generation. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Thank <laughs> you.